Welcome, welcome, welcome to our viewers at home. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of the Great Controversy series. Today we'll be discussing chapter 12 and it's entitled The French Reformation. Now today's chapter is going to be so exciting because we're going to be talking about different characters that are found in this book. Mm -hmm. And my name is Zuki Swangube and I'm joined with my fellow panelists, my brother Neo, Mami Oli, my sister Nsigi, and our mom Nube. We're going to open with a word of prayer and I'm going to ask Os Nsigi to pray for us. Let us pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity and we thank you for this moment, dear Lord. As we are about to enter into the discussion of this chapter of the great controversy, the French Reformation, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us to provide us with wisdom, Father God, even for the viewers at home who are going to listen to this and who are listening at this, we ask that you bless them in a very special way and provide wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In Jesus' name, we ask all these things. Amen. 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 Now, there's a verse that I want our viewers at home to keep in mind as we have this discussion. And the verse is found in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, and it says... For the Lord is not slack concerning mm. his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but mm. that all should come um. to repentance. So God does not want any of us to be lost. God has never wanted any of his precious souls to be lost. And because of that, he is long-suffering. And that's what we're going to see in this chapter. The mm. fact that God continuously brings the truth to his people, yep. and particularly the people in France. Now, contextually, we find ourselves in a period where there's persecution that's going on. Essentially, there's two sides, right? Charles V, who is representing the side of um, the gospel that has to do with works and money and um, the monarchy and the rulers of that day. And we have the gospel of Christ, which is Protestantism or the Reformation, which is trying to push the gospel of Christ. And this side is attacking the people of God. Mm -hmm. So this is where we find ourselves. And this is in, in, in many different lands. So we find ourselves now in France because we are in the different parts of Europe. We've discussed Switzerland, we've discussed Germany, and today we are in France. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Zuki, for providing that nice background. We are in France and we're talking the French Reformation. And as Zuki has already alluded to Charles V, and we do see that uh, the writer of this book, The Great Controversy, mentions in particular that little did he know that he was actually fighting the omnipotent, meaning the all-powerful God. I mean, how can you fight an all-powerful God, you know? And hence his armies were depleted and he just went and died in a cloister, you know, because he was fighting a God who is all-powerful, who cannot be fought. And the Bible says, you know, that um, if God is for us, we who can, can be, be against, against us. us. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, he really did fight against God. And in the end, I think he was just wearied by the effort that it took, yeah. you know. Um, but in as much as he fought more, I think the Reformation started to grow a bit more, mm -hmm. you know. And we can see that in some areas it was starting to dwindle. But it did come to France in yes. particular. Yes. You know? um, in previous chapters, we mentioned um, other reformers like um, Zwingli um, mm. and Luther. Yes. But in France, there was already someone who was, who was um, um, teaching um, the teaching that we find that the reformers were also propagating. And mm -hmm. um, that guy, um, his name is Lefebvre. You know? oh, yes. um, he was an, 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 an older professor. Um, so he didn't have um, the vigor that we find the other pro the uh, Protestant, mm -hmm. um, Protest Protestants had, you know, but he was a very studious guy. Mm -hmm. um, and as he was studying, he was trying to do some research mm -hmm. on some of the, the, the apostles, the saints that he found. But as he started to study the scriptures, he found that actually the saints that are spoken of in the traditions of the church are not the same as the ones that he has found in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then he started to see this contrast, you know, between um, the Bible and the traditions of the church of the time. Mm -hmm. And already um, he was propagating some of these truths and he was speaking about righteousness by faith, mm -hmm. you know, as he would talk about 
how the exchange of forgiveness and sin between Christ and the sinner, mm. that there was this innocent lamb that had to die. And the person who was condemned to die, he then becomes acquitted and he goes free, you know. Mm, yeah. And we start seeing some of these teachings starting to filter in to France and they start to dispel some of the darkness that the traditions had brought to this country. So we can see the Reformation before Luther and Zwingli's time already taking hold of France through the teachings of Lefebvre. Nice. You I know? can add to yeah. that to say it was coming for these men to awaken or to reform after there had been conflict and yeah. darkness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it weakened the saints. Yeah. Divisions among the people. Uh, they, it was associated with powerful forces. Mm. So Protestantism seemed to be destined to be utterly destroyed. Yeah. Mm. But God raises these men mm -hmm. to tear up, to start again and move. And we find that it is only the cross alone that can open the gates of heaven mm. and shatter the gates so, of hell. Yeah. Mm. That's an interesting one, you know, coming in there to, when we, while we are still talking about these men, because they say he was a zealous monk, for instance. Mm. So even though God's people were in this false system, yes. their sincerity and their zeal is what God looked at and said, these are my children, I'm going to save them from this and I'm going to show them from this darkness and I'm going to show them my light. When he approached the study of the Bible, he was not going there to find Christ. No. The, the writer of this book says he was a zealous saint adorer, an adorer of the saints. Mm -hmm. Okay, so his main research project when he approached the Bible was to advance uh, uh, his knowledge of the saints, you know, and only to find that when he reached the Bible, he yeah. found Christ. Yes. And his research focus changed altogether and he focused on the study of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and he yes. teaches, oh, yeah. yes, teaches to teaches, his students. Mm, yeah. You know? William Farrell, of for course. Example, who then takes on the gospel and, and sees this, this Christ that Lefebvre is preaching about. Absolutely. And he himself being an ardent, you know, papist who mm -hmm. was, mm. you know, following rigorously the ways of the church and following what he was supposed to do as a, as a, as a papal, you know, follower. And he eventually receives this gospel and he takes it with both hands, mm, you know. Absolutely. And he goes and he preaches out. In the book of Great Controversy, 213, that's the page, uh, the teachings there that the uh, glory of salvation belongs only to God. Yes. Mm. Uh, he also declared that the duty of obedience belongs to men. Oh, yes. yes. Meaning we are hearing the weight when we read the Bible. God speaks, mm. and it's for it's for us to conform, to obey, to be obedient to whatever we are told to do, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. obedience is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. Yes. So if we are a member of Christ Church, here it said, "Thou art a member of His body," yeah. mm -hmm. meaning between you and Christ, they you are inseparable. Mm. If Christ is in you, you are in Christ. Mm. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and mm. knock. Mm. If anyone's open, mm. I will mm. come in and, and, yeah. mm. and also mm. in John 15 as well, he is the vine and we are the, the branches. branches. Oh, yes. And just imagine if the branch is extracted from the vine. Mm, Can it, it survive? No. There is no survival at all. So in this case, if someone doesn't know where he gets his strength from, then he's doomed to die. True. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's a very important point that you raise, um, Mamioli, because a lot of people have thought that salvation by grace releases a person from obedience. Hey. Hey. And they think that um, just because of grace, Christ died for me, I can live however I want to mm. live. But the quote that you have just brought up, um, which speaks about Lefebvre, mm. sh he shows clearly that salvation, you know, the, mm. the, the work of justification oh, yes. is purely God's job, mm. you know. But um, the, the, the work of obedience is ours. And we don't even render obedience out of our own good works, mm -hmm. but being strengthened by God. Yes. And those works don't also 
um, buy us salvation, but in fact, they show that we are saved. Oh, yes. So we don't obey God um, to be saved, but we obey him because oh, we are saved. Yeah. Oh. So these reformers t- taught you know, righteousness by faith in its proper context, mm-hmm. that Amen. it is God who saves us and it is God who empowers us to will and to do, do of his for good his good pleasure. pleasure. Oh, amen. So yeah, no, these, these reformers were really on point and it shows even back then that God really was impressing upon their hearts mm-hmm. um, the light which was coming from heaven. And we do see here also the omnipresence of God because uh, there's something going on in Germany with Luther there, Zwingli in Switzerland, and here in France we have Farrell even starting his own ministry prior to these two. But these things are just going and going, you know, in different spaces to show that God is not limited. His power and his spirit was moving. And how the, the ministry of the two differs because yes. um, Lefebvre was a, a professor yes. and what he did was he taught his students yes. um, from the classroom mm-hmm. but the convert of one of his teachings who was um, Farrell, yeah, um, William did. Farrell, um, he was a student in his class but he didn't just um, end there, he yeah. came out publicly in yes. his ministry yeah. and I think it also teaches us a very important oh, principle yes. that um, we're not always going to be called to do the same work yes. in the same way, yes. it can be accomplished in different ways, while others may be teaching in the classrooms, others may be called to public squares mm. You know, mm-hmm. and as we had mentioned, because of his age, maybe mm-hmm. that's why he couldn't come out publicly, but here was a younger person, um, William who had more zeal, more energy, more strength, and mm. he didn't just and there in the classroom, but he came out publicly and that's where his mission field was, to mm. preach the gospel publicly. And we also have this bishop who is Meru. Bishop of Mux. Yes, the bishop yeah. of Mux. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He joined yes. and yes. he was zealous for people to hear the truth. And in page 215 it says, many, because of their courage and fidelity in the state, these humble Christians spoke to thousands Yep. who in days of peace had never had yeah. their testimony. Yep. Mm. People now were zealous. People wanted, they were thirsting for the truth. Mm. They had seen, but why are they killed? What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the devil brings persecution to weaken us. Oh, yes. But persecution raises more mm. spreading. Yeah. Mm. As yes. people are persecuted, the news spread to all areas that this is happening. Yeah. And the people wonder why. Yeah. Then they want to know. Mm. And the truth would be spread out. Yeah. And in terms of spreading the, the truth, you know, Le Frevre translated the New Testament into the French language. Yes. And the Bishop of Mux that you mentioned was an instrumental figure because he was a convent of William Farrell's gospel, you know. And uh, he played uh, an important role in terms of assisting to spread the gospel yes. because the New Testament that Le Frevre had translated, he was instrumental in making sure that it's distributed and it spreads out and people rich have a copy of the Bible. And he spared no cost. Yes. So he was funding the printing Absolutely. and the distribution of the Bible. He played a very pivotal role in mm-hmm. spreading the gospel. And this translation is happening at the very same time that in Germany, Luther's German Bible is actually being distributed. So yet again, we see the spirit being in harmony with what's happening here on one part of Europe, is happening in another part. And this shows that God actually wants all men to be saved. It's not just people in France or just people in Germany, but God is trying his level best to include everybody in the show that's going on. So God, whether you are a Lefera in terms of being old, whether you are a Pharrell in terms of being young, God is calling you to partake of the gospel. Yeah. And on that note, we will be taking a short break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back from the break. We continue from where we left off and we were talking about how the New Testament Bible was spreading, how the German Bible was spreading and all the good news were actually being reaching the people and going to where they're going. But obviously we know that this then sparks persecution because the devil is always trying to counteract or at least stop the work that God is trying to do. And this is exactly what we see here. We get to a point where where the bishop you know, when the persecution arises, the bishop is supposed to stand up for the truth. Yeah. 
and he decides to recant. You know, at the face of persecution and suffering, uh, a flesh fails you, you know. Mm. It's something bigger and greater than flesh has to drive you forward. Mm. But what we find courage in is that people who were recipients of his gospel and had become converted were able you know, to go to the stake and mm. witness for the truth in the flames. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What does this tell us about the importance of leadership? You know, the fact that these people were expecting the bishop as yeah. a leader to lead by example. And he doesn't. He decides to recant. And now you've got, you know, the other people trying to find out what they need to do. And as you're saying, they decide to stand up for the truth. I think in many instances in the Bible, or just in general, mm -hmm. we find that what the devil tries to do is attack leaders, mm -hmm. knowing that by their fall, mm -hmm. they can secure the fall of the oh, masses, yes. you know? Mm -hmm. So um, what I find encouraging about this particular narrative, this particular story, is that even though the bishop had fallen, the followers didn't. Mm. Yeah. And what that teaches me is that they didn't rely on his convictions, yeah. you know, yes. they had their own convictions yes. and it wasn't that they were following his bad example, but they knew that even though he may fall away, mm. we are still holding on to the truth because it is true, yes. you know. So that's what, that's the encouragement I take from this thing that even though, yes, the leaders are definitely important and we should also note that they are a target for Satan's temptations to secure mm. their messes, but... Mm. Us individually, we shouldn't look to our leaders. They can disappoint us at any time, mm. but we should always have faith, um, faith in Christ, in the knowing truth. that we will have to stand alone, mm. yes. you know, mm. not being dependent on other people, but we'd have to stand alone. And we should always have a relationship with Christ that will take us through these times of tribulation. Mm. Amen. He turns his Western Luther. Mm. Mm. They feared him because he was coming up more powerful, not giving up. Mm -hmm. So they were threatened, and now they were planning to kill him here and there, planning plots, but God was leading and guiding yeah. mm. and protecting him. So it's not always you talk persecuted. God will allow persecution when your time, you have finished your mission. Mm. Before the mission is finished, he can hide you. He mm. can hide in rocks. He can hide you anyway. Like when we see Elijah with the ravens yes. and with the brook. Mm -hmm. yeah. When the whole city, the whole, there is no water, they can't even find his brook where yeah. he is. Yeah. God is protecting it. Uh, mm. So Amen. our God can work in mysterious ways. Yeah. Let's just be there, allow to be used and do our part and the rest will follow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the charge of heresy which the Romanists were seeking to fasten upon him he would rivet upon them. The most active and bitter of his opponents were the learned doctors and monks yes. in the theological department in the great University of Paris. My question here is, is it because he came from a more a prominent family, not from a peasant family, now that the followers were more like people who are learned so I was just contemplating on that as well. Uh, if ever, it happens that if you are someone who is called and you come from a humble background, uh, those prominent people and those people who are of high caliber tend not to consider you at mm. some point. Mm. We are mostly favored by the one of your same class. And it's something that we mentioned in an earlier episode mm. that um, Zwingli, you know, Martin Luther, they mm. came from humble backgrounds. Yes. We also mentioned how Christ chose fishermen, which mm -hmm. was a humble occupation of those days um, to reach the masses because those people were humble. They were teachable. They were willing to learn from Christ himself. Oh. Um, and when we see um, the rise of William Farrell and Lefebvre, they also come from um, humble backgrounds. But... In this instance, um, God decides to use Louis Bequin, mm. yeah. and he came from the noble, noble. class mm -hmm. of, 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 of France. And not only that, I think it was by God's design, yeah. um, because like you mentioned, 
he was able to reach some of the noble classes, learned teachers who were able to join the movement. Like mm. you say, maybe because of their prejudice, they wouldn't have listened to the Pharrells of mm. the world, to the Lefervres of the world, but they would listen to the Bequins of the world. Mm. But mm. not only that, because he was a genius and because he was um, a knight also, I think, in, in, mm. in, 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 mm. he was very close to the king at the time, um, Francis the first. Yeah. And because he was close to the king, um, the king loved him a lot. Mm -hmm. And whenever he was, um, preaching wherever he would go, sometimes he would be in direct conflict with the papists, but because of his association or because of the class that he was at, mm -hmm. the king was able to protect him many times. Mm -hmm. So we see that God's providence also coming in here, um, where he sometimes uses the humble, but sometimes he sees an opportunity to also use those of a noble background. Mm -hmm. Maybe to add on to that, that's why it is studies to scriptures to show thyself approved. Yeah. Mm. There is a time when we shall reach those higher classes. Yes. So as we go, they say, who are you? True. So when we are also educated like them, we reach them at a quicker level mm. yeah. than they look upon us. It is appealing to our young people. We move with Christ, but we can be educated. But the education of this world, we have to unlearn and take the spiritual one, yes. which is true education. Mm -hmm. We hold on to that, but let's not sit and say, I love Christ, I won't go to school. Let's be educated. That's true. You know, as we know, God was faithful because God raises up another man, you know, the famous um, Presbyterian leader, John Calvin. And he then comes on the scene after this very persecution, you know, God raises him up to take over the work that Bequeen had started now that Bequeen was not there anymore. God raises up John Calvin, who's, who's, a, who's a very timid, he has a timid disposition, you know, quiet nature, but God uses him mightily as well. I think that's a very important point to raise up because a lot of times when we see the people that God has used, we think that that's where they started off, mm -hmm. you know, that they had all of these qualities, you mm. know, but God doesn't call the qualified, hey, you yes. know, he, he qualifies the call. Amen. And that's what we see with Calvin, that um, mm. he was timid, you know, and I, I think it also shows what God can do with us, mm. you know, um, little is much when God is in it. We may yeah. think that we don't have much, but once you allow God to use you, mm. he can do wondrous things with you. And the second point I'd like to raise is um, it's, 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 it's very interesting when you see the providence of God that um, we start at the beginning of, of, of the chapter. Um, it was mentioned that um, reforma um, ref the Reformation faith looked like it was going to be crushed, yes. you know, mm. but then we see God bringing up um, Lefebvre and he brings up William uh, Farrell. William Farrell. Mm. And then what happens at Mole, they Louis get to de be, Bequen. yeah, they, they then are scattered, but they go to preach at other places. Mm. But while they are scattered, Bequin comes, comes up. up. Ah. And then when Bequin comes up and it seems like he's at the ascendancy, mm. he is then taken to the stake. Mm. But when he's taken to the stake, then he raises Calvin. up Calvin. So yeah. it's very important to show that whenever there seems to be a gap and whenever we think that the devil's about to win, God always comes up and he raises the standard again. You know, him. it's interesting how he 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 reacts to the to 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 the news of his own death that okay now you're going to the stake we, yes. we've uh, we've yes. passed the decree on you and we're executing you on the same day he doesn't dress up in sackcloth or what have you yeah. you know he puts on his nice uh, uh knightly uh, garments you know as a knight you know uh, uh, beautiful garments and velvet and all those things are mentioned in this book to meet his death yeah. with cheerfulness yeah. not with sadness or gloom or any such thing the that was striking for me, you know. Mm. And the, the second thing about that is that the people then who were watching were like, wow, mm. we are also ready, you know. Yeah. It propelled them to declare, to say, we are also ready yes. to meet our death cheerfully mm. in exactly in this manner. Instead of the stake, because we know these practices that they were doing at that time, they were meant to, uh, they were done in public, to, to, to actually put you in your place and to call you to orders that look, mm. he's an example, don't do this. Yes. But instead, the opposite, 
you know, was sure. the effect of yeah. these practices because it actually uh, encouraged the people and the people were like, oh, actually, we are ready to, to meet our own death with cheerfulness also, as long as it is for the truth. Yeah. And they were dragged from town to town. Yeah. They ran into mountains. They left countries. It was not easy. Yeah. Mm. As we are enjoying Christianism, way, no persecution. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Another person peace. said, if mm. you are not being persecuted, hey. ask yourself, are you walking hey. with Christ? Because mm. mm. if you are walking with Christ, persecution is certain. Yeah. It may be not in the form of death, but you arrive at churches or wherever, you hear some, ah, no, don't talk about this. You talk what the Spirit is leading oh, yes. Yes. for that time. Let's enlighten the world Amen. and face the, uh, the challenge of the day like the reformers. Mm. You know, those hearts uh, and whatever, mm. they were bent and their mouth kept singing yeah. Yeah. until his death and finished. They just said, no, cry, I'm dying. Many of us were going into depression, stress, what, some small thing we are done, mm. we want to live faith, we want to give up life. True. But this stood the test of faith. Mm -hmm. So let's hold on. Prayerfully, walking with God will reach places. Mm. And, hey. and you know, sometimes people are with you, you yeah. know, but only not, when, not, when not it's safe. Yeah, only, not to, yeah. Only don't, when don't it's endanger safe. me. Don't put the spotlight on me. Yeah. And I don't think that's how we should be. You know, Christ, he says that, you know, if you deny me in front of men, oh, I yes. will deny you oh, in front yes. of the Father. We should confess. We should be bold about um, our stand our with Christ stand and, and not shrink whenever we see, you know, persecution yeah, and tell other people, hey, don't retract. compromise me. But yeah, that was Erasmus, but Bequeen still continued forward mm. with boldness and with courage. Amen. It's actually interesting that Bequeen was on the opposite side, but he's giving him advice that is supposed to protect him, yeah. which shows that God can use other people that are not even of the faith to try and protect you. Yeah. But ultimately, God is our greatest protector. And as we've been talking before we go to the break, we've just been talking about how we need to stand up in the face of persecution, how Amen. it might not be easy, how our leaders can give up, but God is expecting us to stand up. Whether you're timid, whether you're brave, whether you're from poverty or wealth, God is expecting you to stand up for the gospel truth. And with that, we'll go to a break. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Yes. Welcome back to the show and we're going to just start from John Calvin. We just briefly mentioned him and I want us to just talk about him a little bit more. Now, Calvin comes on the scene after per the persecution of um, Louis, right? And mm. he gets on the scene. He's very serious about his, his religion, mm. which is with the papers. And he does not even want to hear anything about this reformation that's going on oh, yeah. or anything anybody has to say. So he has a cousin who comes to him often and they discuss religious matters, you know, issues of spirituality. And his cousin then shows him the fact that there's only two religions. There's the one religion where righteousness is by works and by money and by price. And then there's this religion, which is the biblical religion that is righteousness through Christ and Christ being at the center. And he struggles with this for a while, right? I mean, he, he struggles with it so much that he, he even says to his cousin, do you think I've been believing the wrong thing for all these years? <laughs> I mean, you can imagine the struggle that he's going through. Yeah. And eventually he sees, you know, as he's walking one day, he sees you know, a heretic who was part of the Reformation burning. And he, he looks into the face of this man who's burning and he realizes this man has so much peace. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's, 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 he's at his death, you know, it's not deathbed, but death stake. But he's, he's at peace. He, well, he's not trying is. to fight. He, you know, so he can see that the reason this heretic has peace is because he believes in the Bible. Yeah. And the Bible or the religion of the Bible is what is giving him peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. He felt that uh, he could never become a priest at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he turned for a time to study uh, law. Mm -hmm. But finally, he abandoned and proposed to uh, devote his life to the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. So it's the second time that we... Uh, we come across someone 
uh, was destined for law, but eventually God says, hey, you are mine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because the same case in Luther and in this instance, yeah, it happens the same way. Yeah, it's a very important point to highlight that, you know, sometimes we think that our life will go in one direction, yes. but God, you know, um, takes it in another direction. Um, he was going to, to, to be a law, but he was not going to fulfill the purpose that God had brought him up for, which was to preach the gospel. And um, we saw how he was struggling with some of these questions. Um, of, of righteousness um, from from the, 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 the conversations he had with his cousin, mm. you know, and he realized with the knowledge that I have, I can never become a priest, mm. you know, um, and that's when he decided to to go fully into the gospel. And yeah, and we can see the results of of his ministry in France. I, I wonder by the, uh, the, the, the note that speaking to your relatives. What do you speak? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the time for the gospel. True. Many of us, we are called to party. It's Brian taking me to only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no gospel, no saving of your relatives. Yeah. You will think they shall find Christ on their own. Mm -hmm. It is your duty to see that your family, your friends, yeah. everyone around you receive the gospel. You know, I want to read page 2329. Terrible it become the darkness of the nation that had rejected the light of mm. truth. The peace, the grace that brought salvation, it appeared. But France, after beholding its power and holiness, after thousands had been drawn by its divine beauty, after cities and hamlets had been illuminated by its radiance, yet they chose darkness rather than light. Hey. Yeah. So the, this thing is not individual. As a nation, she. what are you choosing? Yeah. As a tribe, what are you choosing? As Africans, as whatever, we are, some are choosing culture instead of the God, our creator, mm. and his message to save us. Culture will not save us. We were created by God and we developed cultures. Yeah. Our own, some uh, which are contrary to, to, to the Bible, our traditions which that do not match with what God needs. So as we focus, let's stand on the truth mm. and move. He witnessed the death of a martyr, and that death of a martyr was a sermon. It was the greatest sermon that was ever preached to him, mm. and the, the, the most sermon that he needed in his life. Because he used to have these uh, 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 conversations uh, and discussions with his cousin to, to, to no avail, really. You know, but of course, I, I will not undermine the impact of sharing the gospel with your, with your, with your family. Because uh, he is wondering, what is the secret of the martyr's joy? Mm. What is the secret of the martyr's joy? That troubled him. He never slept, uh, 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 you know, after that. Well, I'm just thinking, I'm just imagining that he could not sleep after that without finding out what is the secret of the martyr's joy? Because this person is there burning, but there's such joy and peace, like Zugiswa has already mentioned, in the martyr's face. And he knew that the secret is in the Bible, and he went to stay studied the Bible for himself and he found Christ because in the Bible we find Christ. Mm. My faith has a confidence in God which will resist all powers of hell, close quote. So if you have something which is driving you within, there mm. is no way that you can stop. If the Holy Spirit is propelling mm. you, you cannot be, a, a, be able to be stopped or to be prevented in what God has intended to happen. Mm. Yes. And I think, you know, the, the, the point raised that France had rejected the gospel as a nation. Hey. You know, they were given chances, you know, mm. and it shows that God, the verse that you opened with, that God is long-suffering mm. towards us. Mm. He sent a number of messages. There was Lefebvre, there was um, Pharrell, there was Bequin, there was Kelvin you know, who they also wanted to persecute. And for a while he had to retreat, mm. you know, and, and leave Paris. In fact, he was warned by friends, you mm. know, that soldiers were coming and they had to then fight the soldiers off. Mm. He was in an apartment, he had to go out um, and he had to escape. So you can see that the nation itself um, mm. was, 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 was rejecting um, the message. Mm. But, you know, Sometimes, as we mentioned, that God also uses people in high places yeah. because um, the sister of the king, 
Margaret. Uh, of um, Margaret, Margaret. Yes. was there to, to, to ensure that um, there were still some revivals, there were still places mm -hmm. where they, they, they could preach the word. There was an apartment which yes. they had set aside yes. and they would say, at this hour, mm -hmm. come to the apartment, the word of God would be read. Mm -hmm. There would be um, sermons that would be preached. Mm -hmm. So um, God was still using some people within um, the royalty mm -hmm. to advance the work of Protestantism, you know, but even while that was happening, um, because there was so much resistance, some people were afraid that France is lagging behind in the work of reformation. Mm. It wasn't as quick as the other nations like Germany, like Switzerland, Switzerland were, were, bringing up, were, were coming across. And then they decided, you know, to say, you know what, let's take up placards, you mm. know, let's put them up against the mass. And let's put them around, you know, you, um, France at the time. Mm -hmm. And it's as if in one night, you know, mm -hmm. these placards were everywhere. But unfortunately, and I think maybe that's some that that shows us mm -hmm. the, the 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 lack of wisdom of misplaced zeal. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, they put it in front of the king's mm -hmm. um, um, chamber. Yeah, the king who used to protect per queen, yeah. you know, yeah. but this time the king, seeing this, he read it as anarchy and he decided, nope. Whoever be believes Luther needs to be persecuted. They need to die. They need to face the stake. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, in one way, you know, like you mentioned, France started to reject the, 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 the gospel from the king going down. Mm. And it was a bloody affair, mm. the way they went about persecuting um, the adherence to the Reformed faith. Mm. And one of the things they also did was that there was no printing allowed. So yeah. even the, the printed page, you know, the gospel on, on page, couldn't be, you know, shared. But mm. we're going to discuss this more. I mean, we're going to have a chapter called The French Revolution. Yeah. yeah. That's when we're going to discuss the greatest lens of the persecution that was going on in France and the total state of anarchy when the Bible is set aside. But yeah. we'll get to that episode, so don't miss it. Um, but it's just to say that, you know, it did get to a point where you know, God had given France so many chances as God gives yeah. us chances. Yeah. But they didn't accept the word. They didn't accept the reformed faith. And because of that, when persecution arises, it just wipes out, you know, as, as many of its adherents because now the king was not on their side anymore. True. And with this, then we find that, you know, there, there's, a, there's a, an institution that gets raised up, you yeah. know, and a lot of us know it as the Jesuit movement, yeah. where the Jesuits now are raised up to sort of promote popery and to, and to reinstate the papacy to where it was initially. Mm. And so the Jesuits, they pose as anything you can imagine. So from an artisan to a preacher to a pilot to any educated person, and they are going in, infiltrating the gospel, trying to bring the gospel down. In fact, it's like two sides of the same coin because the very means that, you know, the reformers were being ancient by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. These guys on the opposite end are being ancient by a different spirit, but they are willing to even lay down their own lives. Yeah. You know, Zugi, you've just uh, triggered uh, the idea of opposition, you know, that whenever it, uh, uh, God... Uh, 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 makes a move uh, to, uh, uh, towards the progression of the gospel and his word, the devil also makes some means alongside that to oppose, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and to counterfeit whatever God is yeah. trying to do. Mm -hmm. Because look at what Brother Neo mentioned, misplaced zero, you know. The Bible says we must be wise as serpents, but, uh, you know, Humbless but humble as doves. Yeah. Yeah. But we see here that the Bible went first, you know, to, 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 to mutilate the state of Virgin Mary. Francis, who used to protect the Louis de Bequin, is grieved and he leaves. And Louis de Bequin no longer enjoys the protection he used to, ha to, 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 to enjoy, you yeah. know, and he goes to the stake. He's uh, hanged and then burnt. We also see it here with the people, with the placards also. Oh, yeah. There was a, a, a Calvin in the dominions of Margaret and enjoying some level of protection again. Yeah. But then again, this notion of not be, not balancing the humility and the wisdom, yeah. you know, mm. is creeping in and then it's spoiling the whole thing. And all these are means that the devil is using to oppose the work. Yeah, and That's the extreme ex example is with the Jesuits, like you yes. mentioned, you yes. know, that it was almost like a counter-reformation. Absolutely. What these ones would believe on one side, they mm. used it on the different side for the popery. And I think 
um, it just shows you the lengths that mm-hmm. the devil would go to to try and quench out what God has raised. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so we, we need to be careful about those because, like you mentioned, that lack of tact is what led to the devil indeed. taking such extreme measures. And it, it almost seemed like the Reformation was going to be snuffed out. Mm. But yeah. If you are meant to do God's work and you fail to do, a uh, danger is creeping at your door. Yeah. Because uh, Samson was destined to destroy all the Philistines, but it so happened that he was just entangled mm. because of... A, a disobedience and not Wasn't being able tangled. to we must watch and pray so that we can be able to accomplish what God has destined us to do. So in essence what we're saying today is that the gospel is not a one man show. Oh, yes. you know, God raises up different people at different times of history mm. sometimes even in the same period to all accomplish a different work and we are saying that we should stand up. Some of us will be called to give up our lives but God does not want us to give up our lives if it's not in the best interest of the gospel yes. and ultimately we know that if our lives are hid with Christ in God then when the trumpet shall sound we've got nothing to worry about because Amen. Jesus will raise us up yeah. and on that note we will close in prayer I will ask my brother Nero to please pray for us let us pray our father in heaven we'd like to thank you for the time which you have given us to discuss your word we've read about holy men of history how they were zealous of good works, how they spread the gospel, how they stood for the truth, even at the cost of their lives. We ask that even in these days, you may give us the same courage, not in our might, not by our power, but by your spirit, we'll be able to accomplish the work which you have given us. Thank you for hearing this prayer, for we have prayed in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.